serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. And welcome back one and all, welcome back to a complete run of Robocop for the Amiga. Why the hell am I doing this version? Well, it's pretty damn close to the arcade original. There's a few little bits of changes, but compared to stuff like the Commodore 64 version, the NES version, etc., this is as close as we're going to get without actually playing the arcade. The main big difference is that this is a lot easier than the arcade, okay? But you still only get one bloody life. Okay, so here we go, first level. Now the main difference between this and the arcade, and I will be comparing this to the arcade version quite a lot, is Robocop appears to be moving through bloody treacle. <laughs> um, yeah, whereas in the arcade version it was quite nice and snappy, here it's very bloody slow. Really hard not to take a hit when that motorcycle comes around. And you'll notice we actually start without our gun drawn, which is a bit of a downer, but again, that's what they did in the arcade version, or at least I think I did. Ah! Okay, now we get the gun out, and here's the other small problem. In the arcade version, the rate of fire was actually quite high, even with the uh, the normal sort of power up. In this version, it's a bit slow. Hmm. Also, I should actually say this jumping's a pain in the bloody ass. To actually do this with the controller, you have to press down and then up, or you can press the space bar on the keyboard. Now, not surprisingly, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So I've actually mapped the um, the space bar to a button on the controller. I'm taking way too many hits here. Die! Okay, we should be at the final boss. I'm just going to completely dispense with this uh, spread fire. Did you actually notice, again, the rate of fire on the spread fire compared to the normal is actually a bit low. So as soon as we start using normal, we get a lot more bullets out. Good old ED-209, he appears in every single bloody Robocop game and he'll appear in this quite a few times. They reuse him as a boss more than once. Okay, stage clear. Okay, this is actually a bit weird as well. These shooting stages are in the arcade version, but they seem to have been moved around from what I understand. So I don't think the, uh, the it happens in the arcade version until after the next level. Another big difference, when uh, you play on the, the arcade, the reticule seems to lock onto the targets, where here it does not. You just get the flashing green to show you've done it. Now this is used to actually replenish your health. So the higher score you get in this, the more health, of course, you will regain. And as the game is actually quite unfair anyway, by only having one life, we need all the help we can get. Okay, so here's officially level 2. We start with a gun, fantastic. There'll be no more levels where we start with just our fists, thankfully. Now the enemies will start to get slightly harder here. For example, the chainsaw dude that just jumped at me from the left. Again, arcade version, he takes a right pummeling. And here's another mechanic of the game. Once I've killed these. Punchy, punchy, wall punch! Okay, now we've got the sort of plasma pistol fire. Now the main thing is, so I've had, I'm going to keep referring to the arcade version, but the main difference that I would like to point out right now is the fact that in the arcade version, of course, it's designed to completely bleed you of money. Therefore, you had enemies jumping out left, right and centre. But of course, in this version, it's toned down a bit, but with the one life system, it's still massively bloody unfair. For example, there was no way in hell I was actually going to dodge that fire when I believe it came through that barrier. I really don't want that because that's going to be spread fire. Can't do sod about it. It doesn't really matter actually, the next boss isn't too bad. ED-209, that first one, is very much of a cheap boss because though much in the, like, the Robocop vs Terminator uh, games, he just comes at you and drains you of life. Okay, this is a really easy boss. All we have to do is destroy the two guys on top and then destroy the van. You gonna come out? Or do I need to get up and come to you? I do. And there we go. If you don't um, destroy the van quick enough, it again will just ram you into the wall on the left hand side of the screen, which will of course drain you of health. Okay, so here's another mini game that's not in the arcade version but has actually been replicated into a lot of the other versions. 
it's the face recognition system. So essentially we just need to match on the right hand side what we've got on the left. Why? No bloody idea, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, I think we're good to go. Yep, there we go. So we get uh, our health replenished. Okay, in theory, it's now the junkyard. It is indeed. Right, the junkyard is a bit of the pain in the ass For two reasons. As soon as I kill these, I will, of course, tell you. Right, one. These, um, yes, the magnetics which pick up cars. They have a habit of completely wiping your life out very, very badly. So, gotta dodge them. And there, we have these uh, crusher type things. In the arcade version, you can actually walk on top of them. I found that out the hard way and uh, tried to do that on this version. You will, of course, die instantly. And here we go, hot dogs falling from the sky. Oh, bless the Amiga, it doesn't quite uh, <laughs> replicate them in a very good way. Okay, here we go. Now we have the best gun in the game. Capable of killing bosses in two hits, if I remember rightly. So we've got to be conservative with our ammo. And there's some health up there as well, actually, so that's quite good. Still got 23 shots. Um, we're about to go against the boss, and this has uh, given us uh, quite a lot of firepower. Unfortunately, the guns don't carry over from level to level, which is actually a really big shame. Okay, full health almost. Okay, so uh, time for another boss. As soon as I kill this guy. Crane! Zer, or it should be cranes. Arcade version, there are two of these things, one either side of the screen, but for whatever reason, they uh, took it out in this version. As you can see, that gun is way too overpowered. We are now Super Robocop! Okay, here we go. This one is a bit of a bugger. We seem to actually lose health depending on how many times we hit her. Uh, I just shot her right in the face, but we killed him. Go Robo! So now we should have max health. Right, Narcotics Factory. The, what I remember, that hostage scene isn't in the, um, the arcade version like that. It's actually done as a, a side... How to describe this? It's done like this, so it's not from the first person's perspective. There we go, that will do. So in some ways, the Amiga does have some superior notions on the arcade. There's actually a funny story about the arcade versions. The arcade's done by Data East, and they, from what I understand, oh, hot dogs, they were actually given a treatment of the script before the movie came out, and then they created the game based on that. The same with a riot. No, is it right? No, Ocean, who made this version. And then Data East licensed off Ocean, if that makes any sense. So actually, they follow the story quite well, which is actually really surprising for a video game adaptation. And this is one of the few that I've actually thought of done it well. Okay, not this way, apparently. Actually, yeah, I'll say this as well. I was originally going to do the Commodore 64 version of this, Completely different than the arcade version, but its main problem is when it was released, punchy, punchy, punch, punch. Level 2 had was broken and had a time limit which was far less than you actually could do it in. There was no way in hell you could actually complete the level before the time ran out. I found that out as a kid. I was not impressed. So much so I've never actually completed it. Okay, so we're going to go up against another boss with the, uh, the awesome cannon. Completely unfair, but oh well. Um, now something the Amiga can't do. It, uh, um, it can't uh, display the chain. <laughs> Again, I've got to wonder why they'd give you that super powerful gun. 
right before going against that. I'm pretty sure in the arcade version you had a lot less ammo, and I'm gonna keep saying in the arcade version. A heavy blow for criminals, and more shooting. Which we bloody need, actually. Our health is absolutely at zero. bad. Okay, let's do this! We're actually quite way through the game now, and bloody turrets. Just designed to piss me off. It's not a long game by any means, it's actually... I would say it's slightly shorter than the arcade... I think the arcade version clocks in about 25 minutes if you do it without any deaths, which is what we're having to do here. So I think this is about very similar. Okay, here we go. Here's where everything gets a bit sus well, very silly. You expect me to get through this without losing loads of health? Man, I really did not want that. Oh well. No, oh, at least it's not a crap gun. It's not the spread fire. And health! Yeah, so uh, ED209 again, but now in green. I'm pretty sure there's actually a boss missing from this game, because uh, we will face ED once more, but I'm pretty sure on the arcade version there's two of them? I don't know why the, the, the Amiga seem to maybe have problems displaying two of them on screen at once, I'm not entirely sure. Well done Robocop, you're a bad dude! And here we go then, we've now got to do another photo th type thing, but this time it's firmographic. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that not exactly the same bloody person from last time? Mm, get the eyes right. No, those eyes aren't right, are they? There we go. And there we go! Hopefully, at least three quarters health now. Okay, now for my least favourite level. It's mostly the combination of turrets, people, and the fact that they just pop out of the doors. I find that to be really unfair, and they really do play on that in the Data East bloody arcade cabinet version because obviously it's designed to suck you from of money. But now I do have the best gun in the game. <laughs> okay, up the lift. I said up the lift, not down. Right, lasers! Punchy, punchy, punch, punch! Okay, when we get up here it's going to be a pain in the arse because there's two turrets above us and we need to ideally destroy both of them because we're going to have to time this well because it goes 1-3-2 on the lasers. Okay, one. Oh, yeah, I thought we were going to get clipped. Down to a quarter, well, probably a quarter health, third of health. Punchy, punchy, punch, punch! No, it's alright, we've got a health. I'm trying to actually remember what the boss of this stage actually is. I think it's another ED209. This should actually, yeah, that, I think this is the one where there's meant to be two of them, there's only one. And I've just picked up spread fire, haven't I? Oh, for fuck's sake.
Ah, it appears you have to be central, you can't actually go up the lift otherwise. Thanks game, I'm surprised that didn't actually kill me. Sounds like something it would do, just to be vindictive. Ah, more punchy punchy punch punch. I mean, really, they are, that the walls are just designed to slow you down so you can become a bullet sponge. Unfair, but yeah, I'm actually really surprised that they actually released this only with one life. But again, you know, the game's length probably is indicative of that. Yeah, sneak up behind me. Right, we are almost there, I think. Yep, yeah, here we go. ED209, again. Actually, I think I tell a lie. I think this is the one where there is only one. It's just supposed to be a slightly beefed up version, but you saw how easy that was to dispatch. You have saved Omni! Dick Jones is holding the Omni President hostage. Here we go then. This is different again, arcade version. The arcade version was done from the standard sideways side-scrolling view. Whereas this one is uh, far superior, as far as I'm concerned. Again, we are on a time limit. But uh, actually not hard, a uh, hard final boss in any way, shape or form. Here we go. Nice shooting, son. What is your name? Murphy. So there we go. That is Robocop the Amiga. It's one... Oh, see, congr see you in Robocop 2. The bastards knew they were going to make something. In terms of the actual arcade ports, this is the best one. The arcade version is still far superior, but has a really bad difficulty curve. If you, I mean, if you want to play the arcade version and quite happy to sit there putting in coins, then fair enough, but if you're going to do it on the same level of difficulty that this one has, where you only put in the one sort of life, this version is a bit more sort of easy to do. The NES version, the Commodore 64 version, the Spectrum version, they're okay, but again, they're so far removed from the actual arcade version, I'd stick with this one. So, I've been Trevor's Prime, and I will see you next time.